Okay, so welcome to a Morris Federation online event. And today we have yoga for Morris dancers, which is really important for us. We want to keep Morris dancing for a lot longer. So if I can uh, please hand over to Carla. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name's Carla. Um, so really excited to do this yoga session for you all. Um, just a tiny bit of background. I've been doing yoga for about um 18 years and um i did a yoga teacher training course in india about 15 years ago um and i te i've taught yoga as a hobby since then i've never done it as a full-time job but i've taught it as a hobby and i've been morris dancing northwest morris dancing with slubbing billies for about six years so that's uh, my background um so today we will be doing some yoga asana. Asana is the word for a yoga pose. Um, yoga, for those of you who've never done yoga before, it's um, it's not a sport, so it's not a competition. One nice thing about doing it on Zoom is that hopefully people won't be comparing themselves to other people in the class and they can just really focus on themselves. So that's a really nice thing about doing a Zoom lesson. Um, and while we practice the different asana, just try to be aware of your own body, feel what's going on in your own body. Sometimes I might ask you to focus on a particular part or focus on your breath. Um, or if I don't give any specific instruction, just try to have an awareness of how your body is feeling. Um, in a regular class, I'd obviously be able to keep an eye on everybody. I can't do that in this class. Basically, if something doesn't feel right or if something hurts, then just don't do it. Just stop. You shouldn't be in any pain. You shouldn't be, um, yeah, uncomfortable. OK, so just if something hurts, don't do it. I'll try to give options um, in certain asana. Most asana it's built in how much you can do, how much you want to do yourself. But there are some where, for example, it might hurt people's wrists. I'll try to give an option to take a bit of pressure off wrists, for example. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and I'll try to look in there at regular intervals. Um, you can turn your camera on or off, doesn't matter, but please have your mic off. Um, so I've based this yoga session on what I've read about Morris dancing injuries. So in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, I found some research, which was quite interesting. Um, about 70% of acute injuries to Morris dancers were to the ankle or the calf. Most of the ankle ones could be usually put down to the uh, dance surface. So a lot of calf injuries, and then chronic injuries, 60% were to knees or back. And the general cause of those was um, general unfitness. So because of that, I have based today's yoga session on asana that are going to strengthen and increase flexibility in our legs and our um, core. Strong core so that's your abdominals and your back muscles, that takes a lot of pressure off your knees. So if you've got strong a strong core and you've got strong leg muscles, automatically that gives your knees a bit of a break. Um, plus, obviously, if you've got a strong back and a flexible back, that's going to help prevent back injuries. So that's the main focus today is leg strength, back strength, leg flexibility and back flexibility and as we do each asana i'll try to remember to tell you which what it's doing what it's good for um okay i think that's everything i wanted to say before we start so hopefully you've all got something comfortable um it doesn't matter if it's not a yoga mat but we will be lying down at some times and having our knees down so having a, a rug or a blanket, folded blanket or something like that is going to be more comfortable for you. 
Um, we'll do a little bit of a warm up to start with, which um, would also be a good warm up to do before a Morris dance session as well. And it's a good warm up to do before a yoga session. So we're going to come up to a standing position. And we're going to stand with, I'm just going to pull my mat back slightly. We're going to stand with our feet about hip distance apart. And we're going to pull our tummy in, roll our shoulders back and down. Feel the floor under your feet. Try to be aware of the floor under your feet. Can you feel where your heels are touching the floor? Can you feel where the balls of your feet are touching the floor? And just try to stand evenly so that you've got equal weight on left foot and right foot, equal weight on heels and balls of your feet. And then just try not to have your, your knees locked. So just have a little bit of softness in your knees. And we're just gonna start by um, stretching our neck. So we're just gonna rotate our neck gently in one direction. And just be aware of that movement. Whatever's comfortable for you, if it's not comfortable to go right back, then don't go right back. Whatever feels good. And we're just gonna do a few rotations in one direction. And then we're gonna change direction and just do a few rotations in the other direction. And back to center. And we're just gonna turn and look, turn our head to look one way. Turn our head to look the other way. And turn again. And again, and back to center. And then we're just going to bend our ear to our shoulder. And the other way. And the other way. And one more time. And then bring your chin to your chest. And then again, this might not be comfortable. If it's not comfortable, you might just want to lift your head to 45 degrees. Or if it's comfortable, you can take it further back, look up at the ceiling. And chin to chest. And looking up to whatever degree is good for you. And we're just going to give our wrists a little rotation. First in one direction. You might hear some cracking, minor cracking. And then in the other direction. And then if you have got not very good balance, if you've got something you can hold on to, if your balance is okay, then that's fine. And we're just going to lift one foot, rotate the ankle in one direction and the other direction. And change legs. And again, rotate in one direction. And the other direction. And then back to standing feet hip distance apart and then we're just going to do some side bends so bending over to the side imagine you're between two plates of glass so you can't go forwards you can't go backwards just to the side just reaching down your thigh with your hand you'll feel a stretch down the other side of your body here and then back to center over to center. Just got something strange on my computer screen. Let me just see what that is. Uh, 
Okay. Talk about where I was then. Let's just go over this way again. And back to center. And one more time this way. Back to center. And we're just going to roll our shoulders. So up and back and down a few times in that direction and then change direction and then one at a time back back like this and then forward one at a time Okay, lovely. Right, so that's our warm up. And now we're going to start, we're going to come down onto our hands and our knees. I just need to give my glasses a quick wipe. So get yourself down onto your hands and your knees. And ideally, you want to have your arms vertical so that your shoulders are directly above your wrists. And your thighs vertical so your hips are directly over your knees if that's putting too much pressure onto your uh, wrists then just take the weight back a little bit you'll not have a vertical um, arm and thigh but that's okay don't worry so if you if it's too much to be right over like this then just come back a little bit but ideally we are like this and we're going to do two asana called uh, cat and cow. So this is for spine flexibility. Uh, cat position first. We put our chin to our chest and we lift our back up like an angry cat. So this is cat position. We're pulling our tummy in. Our spine is up as high as you can get it. Chin to chest. And then cow position. We bring our tummy down, our tailbone goes up, and we lift our chin up. So our spine is bending in the opposite direction. And then we're just going to move between those two um, movements, between those two positions. So chin to chest, back up into cat. And then tummy down, chin up into cow. And one more time into cat. And one more time into cat. And then coming back to a neutral position. And then from here, again, if this is uncomfortable, just go back again with your, um, your hips to take pressure off your wrists. We're going to do a balance from here, which is good for our core muscles. So I'm going to do my left leg. So if everyone does the left leg, we're going to lift it up so it's vertical to the ground. We try to keep our back in the same position. And then if we can, we're going to lift up our right arm. So it's the opposite arm and leg, left leg, right arm. Then your arm and leg are parallel to the ground. And you're pulling your tummy in. And you might be able to feel that in your tummy muscles. So this is strengthening those core muscles around your abdomen and release that we'll do it on the opposite side so now it's right leg and left arm again try to have them vertical to the ground we're not trying to lift them up high we're just having them vertical and we're pulling our tummy in we're just using those core muscles to help us to balance and release and we'll just do those one more on each side so again left leg right arm 
This time as you're doing it, imagine someone's pulling your leg backwards and pulling your arm forwards as if they're trying to stretch you and make you longer. And just feel the effects of that in your uh, abdomen area. Feel those that stretching. And release. And right leg, left arm. Again, imagine someone's pulling those fingers, pulling your leg, stretching your abdomen out. And release. Okay, we're going to come now into a position, very um, really good yoga position, downward facing dog. You probably, even if you've never done yoga, you might have heard of that position. So just take your hands a little bit forwards from where they are, curl your toes under, and then you're going to push into your hands, put your hips as high as you can, and then start to take them as far back as you can. So you're trying to imagine, you can put a bit of bend in your knees if you need to. Imagine that someone's trying to pull your chest towards your thighs. It's never going to touch your thighs, but that's the direction that we're taking it in. The chest is going towards the thighs. If you can straighten your legs, that's great. Ideally, you're wanting to bring your heels towards the ground. It doesn't matter whether they touch or not, but just bringing them towards the ground. And we're pushing into our hands. You can give your feet a little pedal like this, if that feels good. If you need to rest at any time, just have a little rest, come out of it, it's fine. And this position is really good to stretch the backs of our legs. It's really good for our back. And it's also an inversion, which means you're a bit upside down. So your head's lower than your chest. Um, and that means that you're getting a good supply of blood to your head and your brain, which is really good for us. And then we're going to come out of that position and we're going to come into plank position. So ideally in plank, your shoulders are directly above your wrists and your body's in a straight line from your head to your heels. If that's not good for you, for your wrists, you can do a plank on your forearms. So if you put your hands together, elbows apart, lift your knees, elbows below shoulders. So this is a plank, a low plank, which doesn't put any pressure on your wrists. If that's still too much for people, you can bring your knees to the floor and that just takes a bit of pressure off. So you've got knees on the floor option, you've got knees up option, or you've got full plank option. So whichever one uh, works for you, come into that position. And then just be aware of um, how your tummy's feeling in that position. Can you feel your abdomen working? So this is really good to strengthen our core muscles. Really good for our abdomen. Have a little rest, sit back for a minute. And then we're just going to do that one more time. So just take a breather. And then when you're ready, just come into it again, whichever version is good for you. I'm going to do the low version this time. Again, my body's in a straight line from my head to my heels. And I'm just focusing on the muscles in my tummy and feeling how that makes them feel as I do that. And then we're going to have a little rest. We'll have a little rest after every few asana. And the position we're going to rest in is child's pose. So child's pose, we have our knees a little bit apart, our big toes together. And then we just come down. And if we can, we rest our forehead on the mat. If that's not possible, you can make yourself a little tower with your fists and rest your head on your little fist tower like that. And just take a breather in this position. 
And while just stay in that position, I'm going to get up just to check the chat and see if there are any questions. But if you just want to stay in that position for a couple of minutes, take a breather. Okay, no questions at the moment. And any time during the session, if you if there's a position that doesn't suit you or you need a rest, this is a really nice position to rest in. Um, or you just have a lie down, whatever you like to have a rest. Anything is good. It should be a relaxing position to take a rest. And when we're resting, just have a little focus in on your body. How's your body feeling after doing those different asana? Notice if you've got any places that feel stretched or feel a bit warmer just being aware of any sensations in your body okay and then from here we're going to come down onto our fronts so we're going to lie down and rest your chin on the floor, legs are together, feet are together, hands are by your sides, palms down. And we're just going to lift alternate legs. So lifting one leg up and then slowly bringing it down. And then another leg up. Slowly bringing it down. So we're moving slowly. And with control, one leg at a time, we're going to just keep repeating this. So this movement is good to strengthen your legs, but also your back. And we can do this movement with our breath. So inhaling as we lift a leg and exhaling as we lower a leg. and trying to have your upper body relaxed while you're doing it. So just trying to relax your arms and relax your shoulders. Just let your legs and your back do the work. And we'll do one more on each side. Okay, and then we're going to do a position called Baby Cobra. So for this, we're going to bring our hands, palms down next to our face. And we're going to lift up our head, but we're going to try not to put pressure onto our hands. So it's our back muscles that are doing the work. So I'm lifting my head. My heels are together, my legs are together. This protects your lower back. And my hands are down, but I'm not actually putting any pressure on my hands. I can lift my hands up and stay in the same position. So it's my back that's doing all the work, not my arms. Keeping your heels together because this protects your lower back. And slowly release. Take a couple of breaths and then we're going to do it again. So heels together, legs together, lifting up. Again, try not to put pressure on your hands. You're just using your back muscles. And release. Take another couple of breaths and then we'll do it one more time. And this is a really good um, asana for strengthening your back, strengthening your lower back. One more time, lifting up, heels are together. And release. And now we're just going to come into child's pose again for a little rest. Big toes together, knees apart, arms forward, or making a tower if you need a tower. 
and just resting down, bottom on heels, forehead on the mat. And again, just being aware of your body, being aware of how your body's feeling after those asana that we've just done. We're going to come out of that position and we're going to come to a standing position. So when you've been lying down, it's good to stand up slowly to avoid feeling lightheaded. Usually if we come up head last, it stops us feeling lightheaded. So I usually just come up like this with my head down until the last minute. And then head up finally and it just stops us feeling lightheaded. Okay, we're going to do some... Um, Asana now from a standing position. So the first position we're going to do is called intense pose, which from its name, you can guess it's going to be a bit intense. It's not the nicest position, but it's really good for strengthening our thighs. You'll feel your thighs burning as your muscles are being used. And that's OK to feel that little bit of burn. That's doing good. That's strengthening. If it's a sharp pain or anything, then don't do it. So for intense pose, you can either have your feet right together or you can have them hip distance apart, whichever is more comfortable. And you're just going to imagine that you're going to sit back onto a chair. So imagine you're sitting, about to sit down onto a chair. And then your arms are coming up. They're probably not vertical, but as vertical as is comfortable. And then have a think about your tailbone. Your tailbone is the bit right at the bottom of your spine. You want to try and imagine you're tucking your tailbone under. So it's a bit hard to explain, but you're trying to not have that arch in your back. You're trying to get rid of the arch and bring your tailbone under. And to make it more intense, you can go lower. To make it less intense, come a bit higher whatever is good for you, but you want to feel a bit of heat in your thighs because then you know that your muscles are working and they're getting stronger. And release. And then we're going to do a position next called warrior. There's lots of warrior positions. This one's warrior two. And this is good for our leg muscles and our core as well. So for this position, we need to take our legs wide apart. The wider you take them, the more intense the pose is. If they're closer together, it will be less intense. So we're going to put one foot parallel with the, if you're on a yoga mat, it would be parallel with the edge, the short edge of the mat. And the other foot is pointing towards the other short edge of the mat. So one's parallel, one's pointing. And the one that's pointing, we bend the knee. So ideally your knee is directly above your ankle, not further than that. So here or less is fine. And your back leg is straight and strong. So you're pushing into your heel, you're pushing into that uh, back foot. Your body, is facing forward. So there's a tendency to twist, but your body should be this way. And then your arms come up parallel to the floor, drop your shoulders down, and then you're turning to look over that front leg and just look along your middle finger. Once you're in this position, there's lots of things to be thinking about. So our tummy should be pulled in, our shoulders should be down away from our ears. Our back leg is straight and strong. Our front leg, try not to let your knee come forward like that. Try to keep it pushed back a bit. Keep breathing. Take a rest if you need to. And again, by having your tummy pulled in, this is really good for your core as well. 
But obviously, as you'll be feeling by now, it's really good for your strengthening your thighs as well, which is in turn good for your knees. Okay, and let's release that. And we're going to keep our legs where they are, but just turn to go in the other direction. So now the opposite leg is the bent leg and the other one is the straight leg. So just get yourself um, lined up. Body, remember, don't let it twist. Keep it facing the front. Arms are parallel to the floor. And this time we're looking down the other middle finger. And then we go through all those things again that we need to think about. So back leg is strong and straight. Shoulders are down. Tummy is pulled in. Be aware of this knee. My knee is always trying to go like that way. Keep it pulled back. And remember to keep breathing. And release. And give your legs a little shake out. Okay, the next position we're going to do is called pyramid pose. So in pyramid pose, we're standing um, long ways on our mat and we're just gonna take a step forward and then just make your legs a little bit wider. So you've got quite a, um, a secure base, you're not losing your balance. And then once we're like this, we're just going to bend, we're gonna try and bend from our hips with a flat back, we're just bending over that front leg. And you're going to feel that as a stretch down the back of your front leg. So this is increasing flexibility in your calf and in the back of your thigh. Uh, it doesn't really matter where your hands are, you can have them on your hip or you can rest them on your leg, it's up to you. And it doesn't matter how far you can bend, we've all got different levels of flexibility. Even if I just go to here, I can feel enough stretch down there. I probably could go further, but I don't need to because I can feel that stretch. That's enough for me. And once we're in a position like that, once we've got that stretch, what it's good to do is just to try and relax. Obviously, that's easier said than done, but whatever bits of you, you can relax, you try to relax. Can you relax your face? Can you relax your shoulders? Can you relax the fronts of your legs? And even though it's really being stretched, can you try and relax a little bit the backs of your legs as well? And release. Your legs are stretched bit of a shake out and then we're going to do the opposite leg so take a step forward with the other leg widen your stance a little bit so that you're not losing your balance and then again you're just bending from your hips so it's like a hinging movement keeping a flat back and you're just hinging over that front leg and again it doesn't matter how far you can get as long as you're feeling a stretch then that is doing good so you're leaning over that front leg. And again, just trying to relax any part of your body that you can, any bit that you're not using, try and relax that bit. Face, arms, shoulders. Maybe you can relax your back leg a little bit. And release. And again, a little bit of a shake out. And we're going to do a forward bend now. So two, there's two types of forward bend. We'll do both types so that you can feel the difference. So the first type, legs feet are together or hip distance apart. 
The first type is again with that hinging movement. So you're trying to keep a flat back, so push your bottom back, and then just with a flat back, coming as far as you can, keeping your black back flat. You can rest your hands on your thighs. If you've got more flexibility, you might be able to rest your hands on your shins. But we're not looking to get really far down. We're looking for the flat back and the stretch in the backs of our legs. So this is a flat back extension in a forward bend. So it's really stretching the backs of your legs, really increasing the flexibility in your in the backs of your legs. And then we'll just take a rest from that. Shake your legs out. And then the other type of forward bend we can do, legs in the same position together or hip distance. This time, instead of hinging, we're just letting our body flop down. So it's a, you imagine you're a bit like a rag doll. And again, it doesn't matter how far you get, whatever's comfortable. And in this forward bend, the stretch is usually going to be a bit further down your legs. So instead of being at the backs of your thighs, it's bringing the stretch more into your calves, into your lower legs. So it doesn't really matter what you do with your arms. You can hold on to your elbows. That's quite a nice thing to do. If you've got good flexibility and you can touch your toes, you can put your hands under your feet. You can play around with the weight, so you can bring your weight onto the balls of your feet and then take it onto your heels and just notice the difference that makes to the backs of your legs. Just the tiniest movement will make you feel a difference, which bit's being stretched and how much it's being stretched. And just let your head dangle. And then to come out of that position, you're just going to bend your knees a bit and then you're going to just bring yourself up head last again, just so that you don't feel um, lightheaded. We're going to do one more position um, from, a, from, a, from standing. So this is called triangle pose. So we take our legs fairly wide apart. And just like when we did warrior, one of our feet is parallel to the short edge of our mat and the other one is pointing to the other short edge. So in this position, our both legs say stay straight. In warrior, we had a bent knee, but in this one, they're both straight. And we're going to push the hip. This is going to be our back leg the one that's parallel here, this is our, going to be our back leg. So the hip on that side, you're just going to push it out to the side like you're doing, I'm a little teapot or something, and bring your arms out and then you're just going to bend to the side. So a bit like when we did a side bend at the beginning of the session in the warm-up, imagine you're between two plates of glass. So you're not bending forward, you're not bending back, you're just bending sideways. Then ideally, this top arm is going to be vertical, pointing up to the ceiling. And the bottom arm is just resting wherever is comfortable. And this is stretching the inside of your thigh. So this is good for flexibility of inner thighs. You can feel a stretch probably down this side of your abdomen. And always just being aware of where you can feel a stretch, where you can feel heat. I'm looking up at my hand, but if that's not comfortable, you can look straight ahead. 
and release and change your feet position so we can do it in the other direction so again this hip now the back hip is going to just push out to the side and then we're going to go bending over to the side top arm is vertical if we can manage that we're not bending forward we're just bending sideways looking up or looking straight ahead and your other arms just resting wherever is comfortable on that uh, front leg and again just being aware of how that's feeling can you feel a stretch down your abdomen can you feel a stretch in your inner thigh and slowly release okay and then we're going to come down into a sitting position so we're going to sit with our soles of our feet together and you're going to bring your feet as close to your body as you can whatever is comfortable and we're going to take hold of our toes and then just think about sitting up as straight as you can you'll be leaning forward a bit that's fine but just trying to have that fairly straight spine and then just thinking about your knees so just gently pushing your knees with little butterfly movements pushing your knees towards the mat so this position is good for your hips good for your inner thighs it's just again increasing flexibility and then we are going to just come into a cross-legged position um or half lotus half lotus is where one foot is on our thigh so if you already do yoga regularly or if you've got good flexibility you might be able to do half lotus if not just sit cross-legged we're going to change the cross afterwards so it doesn't matter which way you crossed at the moment and we're just going to do a couple of twists from this position so this is to um with with done flexibility with our spine that way now we're doing flexibility with our spine left to right so we're going to bring one hand onto the opposite knee and then the other hand just goes on the floor behind you and then you're just twisting round towards the hand that's on the floor so your sitting bones are staying down on the floor you're sitting up straight and you're just turning and looking over that shoulder bringing that twist all the way through your spine and release so we're going to do it on the opposite side so put the other hand on the other knee that hand behind and twisting the other way making sure you're still trying to sit up straight imagine you're being lifted through the crown of your head and you're just turning to look over that shoulder and feeling that lovely twist all through your spine and release let's have a little rest in child's pose so coming back into child's pose that's where our knees are apart our big toes are together and we're just resting down either with our hands forwards or making that tower to support our head or forehead on the floor 
bottom back onto your heels and just take a few breaths here. I'm just going to come out of the position briefly. I've not checked the chat for a while. I'll just do that. Everyone else, just stay where you are, taking some breaths. Slowly come out of that position and we're just going to come down onto our backs. So we're lying with both legs out straight, hands by our sides. Just getting comfortable like that. And then we're going to bend one knee. So the leg with the bent knee, your foot's flat on the floor now. And then the leg that's straight, you're just going to slowly lift that up as high as you can comfortably take it. And then if you can, you're just gonna grab that leg. If you need to bend your knee slightly, that's fine. Grab behind that leg, either behind your thigh or behind your calf, wherever you can reach comfortably. And then we're just going to rotate the ankle first in one direction and then in the other direction. And then we're just going to flex the foot. So bringing the toes down towards your face and then point your toes up to the ceiling. Flex and point. And then you're just going to pull that leg a little bit towards you. Not so that it's uncomfortable, not so it hurts, but just seeing if you can bring it a little bit closer towards you. So again, this is just increasing the flexibility of your legs. And then release that leg and slowly lower it to the floor. Try to lower it as slowly as you can. That's just going to help use those thigh muscles and bring it down to the mat. And then we're going to swap legs. So the leg that was straight is now bent. The leg that was bent is now straight. And we're just going to repeat that on the opposite side. So we're slowly lifting up that straight leg, bending the knee if you need to, take hold of the leg, and then we're just going to rotate the ankle. And change direction. And then flexing the foot and pointing the foot. Flexing and pointing. And then just pulling that leg gently towards you. And then releasing the leg. And again, we're going to very slowly lower it to the ground. The more slowly we lower it, the more work we're making it do, the stronger those thigh muscles are getting. And then we're going to bring both knees to be bent. So feet are flat on the floor. We're going to bring our arms out to the sides, shoulder height, and we're going to turn our palms facing up. 
and then we're going to cross one leg over the other. So I'm crossing my left leg over my right leg. So my left leg is on top. My right leg is on the bottom. And then I'm going to take my knees over to the right. So whichever leg is on the bottom, that's the direction you're taking your knees. And you're just going to keep your foot down, but just let your knees come out to the side. And if your other foot touches the ground, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's okay. And you see, so bringing a twist into your back. So both, both shoulder blades should still be on the mat. If you need to bring your legs back up a bit to make sure your shoulders are on the mat, then do that. Both shoulders are on the mat. And that ensures that we get a good twist through our spine. And so your legs now, are the, grab, the weight of your legs and gravity are doing the work for you. They're bringing that twist into your spine. And just to finish off the twist, you can just look in the opposite direction to your legs. Look over that shoulder towards that other hand. And slowly release. Keep your arms where they are, cross your legs the opposite way. So now my right leg is crossing over my left leg. So now my left leg's on the bottom and then my knees are going over to the left. Keeping my right shoulder blade firmly down on the mat. And then I'm turning my head to look at my right hand, so the opposite direction. So then you've got a twist going all the way down, right from your neck, right down to the bottom of your spine. And so this position is, again, it's increasing that flexibility in your back. And slowly release. We're going to do one more asana and then we'll have a short relaxation to finish. So for this one, we need to have our feet as close to our body as we can. Feet flat on the floor. Our hands are palms down by our sides. This is called bridge position. We're just going to lift our hips up as far as is comfortable. Try to keep your knees fairly close together. Don't let them fly apart. And this is bringing flexibility the other way into our spine, and, but it's also strengthening our back muscles and our thigh muscles. Make sure we keep breathing. Slowly release. And then just for a short relaxation at the end, we're going to come into Shavasana position, which means corpse position. So we're lying on our backs and just basically making yourself comfortable. So palms facing up, let your um, feet fall out to the sides, legs wherever is comfortable. If it's not comfortable to be flat on your back, then you can have your knees bent and together with your feet wide apart. Sometimes it's not comfortable to lie flat on our back, that's fine. Basically, you should just be comfortable, whatever's comfortable. And I'm just checking the time. Okay, five minutes. So we'll do a progressive relaxation so basically i will tell you to focus on different parts of your body starting at our feet and we're going to tr try to relax those parts of our body 
and just be aware of them as well. So we're going to start with our left foot. You're going to bring your attention to your left foot. Just try to be aware of different parts of your feet. Can you be aware of your toes, your heel, the sole of your foot? And once you're aware of it, you can notice if it's relaxed or not. And we can actively try to relax it. So just give your foot the instruction to relax. And then we're going to start moving our awareness up that left leg. So we're going to try to relax our ankle, our calf, relaxing our knees, our left knee, left thigh, left hip, and just try to relax that whole left leg. And then taking your attention to your right foot. And relaxing your right foot. Ankle. Half. Knee. Thigh. Hip. Relaxing your whole right leg. And then take your awareness to your abdomen. Relax your abdomen, relax your lower back, your upper back, your chest, shoulders, And then take your awareness down your left arm, relax your upper arm, forearm, hand, and relax your right shoulder, right upper arm, lower arm. Right hand. And bring your awareness into your neck. Relax your throat, back of your neck, back of your head, top of your head. Relax your forehead, your eyes, cheeks, mouth, jaw, Just relax your whole body. Just be aware of the floor beneath your body, supporting your body so you can fully relax. Just going to bring a little bit of movement back to our body. So give your fingers a little wiggle. Give your toes a little wiggle. Maybe roll your head from side to side. 
Maybe have a stretch. And then just very slowly bring yourself up to a sitting position. Any comfortable sitting position. Just take a deep breath in and a breath out. And one more breath in, raise your arms if you want to. And a breath out, bring your hands to your chest, prayer position. Namaste, we're finished. Thank you very much, everybody.